Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Psychonaut Sessions. I'm here with cult leader and <laughs> comics resident DJ of enlightenment, the one and only Matt King. Thank you. Thank you so much, <laughs> mighty guru, for um, gra gracing us with your presence um, and allowing us the opportunity to be able to lift the veil and find out what goes on behind your mad mind. Faking it till you make it. <laughs> That's just what I was saying earlier, wasn't it? Just like any cult leader. Hell yes. Hell yes. So if you don't know who Matt King is and you're probably insane, you probably are a very boring person because uh, <laughs> Tales to Enlighten was um, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> like, uh, this book um, is a psychedelic trip in and of itself it's it 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 replaces certain drugs that are on the market we, we could we could certainly peddle this um well done work i don't i don't even i don't even know what to say um but before kind of getting into that um i tried to research you a little bit um and you're hard to find because there's actually a couple of there's another writer out there named matt king there's an actor out there named matt king so either you're playing this game of doubles on me or you're some sort of, some sort of shapeshifter or um, you do really well on keeping a low profile. I'm not sure. So, or I'm really bad at internet searches. Probably low profile. <laughs> well, that's cool. <laughs> um, so uh, like, let's, let's like take things a little bit back. I'm not going to ask you, when did you start first reading comics and blah, blah, blah. Um, 1977. <laughs> You got the exact date. No, I don't. Uh, I'm like that. Um, but really, I want to know where your your passion for writing uh, really blossomed, and how, like, what 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 were your what were your first forays into becoming an amateur writer into some sort of like you know professional state? Sure, uh, this will be a, a very short answer. You'll probably be very disappointed in, but Tales to Enlighten was the very first thing I ever wrote the end <laughs> for real for real yeah oh my god i never wrote a thing before i never wrote a story i never wrote uh you know you know other than schoolwork or whatever but yeah okay so at least like from a comic artist perspective i mean you're always told you know just start something small like even as a writer um i was told i was kind of guided to you know, just get something out there, start small, you know, especially don't, don't start with a project that is like your lifeblood, like the project right. you've been waiting you, to do. You always, you always hear like, don't start with your magnum opus, you know, it's like, just start with some small stories and then get there eventually someday, maybe. So Fuck you that. just took the swan dive and did it. <laughs> yeah. My exactly. God. So what was the process? Did you have uh, some kind of mad vision on uh on some sort of pilgrimage uh, out in the boonies, and then all of this came to you. Like what? But like, how did Tales to Enlighten come about, and uh, what was the process in getting it up and going? Okay, um, so it really stems back to being on Tumblr. James Edward Clark, um, the awesome artist uh, of the book, also on Tumblr. Uh, back in probably 2015, I was buying uh, commissions from him like 30 bucks a piece for some nice ink and watercolor pieces you know i'd be like you know draw black bolt freaking out draw flavor flay with robot arms just anything wild you know we we're having fun with it probably got about half a dozen commissions i was just following his blog really big fan um yeah and he, he was posted um a zine like a six or eight page zine maybe that he said someone had commissioned him to do and i was like Oh, well, I could pay him to do sequential art pages and we could make a book. So let's make a 24 page book. And then I just kept adding to the script and adding to the script and adding. To the, then, you know, he gave me like 150 pages or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's that, a happy monster, and, man. Even, um, I, you know, I must have broken every rule of writing. I don't know what a story arc is. I don't know who Joseph Campbell is. I, um, all I had to go by was, you know, decades and decades of comic book reading and just like absorbing all of that, juicing it down, distilling it and uh, kind of regurgitating 
through filters of music and philosophy and stuff that I, you know, that I dig, you know, whether I live, whether I live a righteous life or not, you know, that's, that's debatable, but I could say so on paper. That's right. That's right. Um, so, I, you know, I actually think that the whole st- structure of writing that is promoted, I mean, I went to school um, and uh, one of my one of my majors was in English and the emphasis on creative writing. And, you know, coming out of that, I, I you know, that's what people do. They follow the Campbell structure. They follow this three part structure. And now what we get is a slew of films and and books out there that frankly bore the shit out of me (laughs) because there's this template that's promoted now in writing so i actually really appreciated that about your book that you just it just i'm not it's not all over the place it definitely has you know there's a goal that you know they're trying to reach that sam's trying to reach but um it's just um obviously you're just having fun that and that's what that's what makes it great to read because you can tell you're just having a fucking good time who cares about you know trying to you know stick to these certain methods and um so i i love it about i love it so much 100 percent, it was about having fun at least from my standpoint writing pages and just like waiting on the edge of my seat to see what james was going to give me back <laughs> and what a what a fucking thrill man he, his artwork is um it makes me jealous when i look at it <laughs> um he seems to he seems to go he seems to go for this like certain element that i'm trying to go for where you could definitely tell it's independent it's it's not mainstream but still has this professional polish to it this he just, and it and it seems effortless i think that's what i'm going for um, there's some people you can you can you can tell that they're really trying and they're trying really hard and i can imagine i haven't talked to him at all yet but i can imagine that he can turn stuff out pretty quickly he does those um f- every day he posts new commissions he did that's always like 50 dollars commission so he's constantly cranking them out because you know for 50 bucks it's got to be fast right yeah you know Plus, you know, he, he throws in a bunch of zines and all sorts of bonus stuff. It's like the best deal out there as far, as far as uh, as far as original art. But even before that, you know, I'd be talking to him. I'd send him pages. He's like, well, I can't, you know, I won't be doing this tonight. I'm going to life drawing, you know. And then on the way to life drawing, he's, you know, sketching in the sketchbook. And then on the way back on the bus, it's just like, he, I think he just, you know, they say whatever the 10,000 hours. I mean, he has way, you know, he's completely immersed himself where you say it looks effortless and I'm not saying I'm not, you know, speaking for him. I'm just, uh, my impression is it seems like it's second nature to him now. Sure. Well, speaking of effortlessness, I mean, your, your work, your writing seemed effortless as well. So seeing as that this is your first foray into writing, did you struggle at all? What was your writing process like? Did you just, smoke up one night and then get it all out i mean but <laughs> no what what is it come on give me something give me something so so originally it was going to be like a 20 24 page um mm-hmm. like bootleg comic using the straight up marvel characters that we parody yeah yep. um and then james talked me into like at least altering them enough that we could you know sell this thing great oh, idea yeah. yeah so that's what we did and it was that first part of the book where they just go around knocking people's heads off and fucking with them that's all the book was really going to be mm-hmm. i thought the um title tales to enlighten was a, a nice riff on tales to astonish or tales of yep. suspense and you know and i was like i didn't have an ending all i was just like well, let's fuck with the Fantastic Four or let's fuck with Captain America and make him a MAGA freak, you know? Um, but so I needed an ending. I was like, well, it really should relate somehow to this title that I came up with that, you know, I'm not writing anything, you know, we're, we're, they're, they, so the premise of the book, the grandson of Satan, his sidekick, Manfred the Man Machine, um, they have this plan to kill 666 superheroes, collect their heads, put it into the Satan machine, the misery machine, and we'll transport them to an enlightenment, which isn't, you know, the realization that we're all in this together, but 
it's a club <laughs> where where the where the uh the godlike figure is a dj you know so and then the sport you know there's a big spoiler but i don't know should i throw it in or not i don't it's like over a year old so yeah, it's like people, these, these people should people should go out there and get the damn book but if right. you want to spoil it go right it. even if you spoiled it though uh, it's worth the money it is right. such a high quality product and um the the level of work and I, I can't imagine you spoiling anything that still wouldn't take away the fun so right it's, it's up so, to you so the idea is they're going around murdering everybody in the name of satan their big role model is this dj megatrip guy he takes the helm this all-seeing eye helmet off and it's jesus underneath you know so it's like boom fuck you <laughs> so um uh, with a with a penis named after me, no less. Yes, yes, I definitely named it after you. So, so. Uh, fire breathing, uh, fire breathing mutant sentient penis, we call it. <laughs> and uh, you get that origin story in the next book. Yeah, but, can't uh, wait. Cannot so, anyways, it, it was just a blast to write. It was, and so I gave James. So I would give him like the first part before he went to. We before we went to the Bat Cave, and then I would give him the scene with the Bat Cave, and then I would give him the scene with the Fantastic Four. And then I was like, "All right, let's kill a whole bunch of different people, and then transport ourselves to enlightenment." And then I was like, listening to all these Buddhist podcasts on the way. To, I have like an hour commute each way to work, and I was just like listening to all these po podcasts. My girl's got a whole library full of this stuff, and uh, you know, sh she's a much better person than me. So I was would look at these books, and it's like, you know, damn, I wish I could live my life like that. Like, let me just pretend I do, and I'll put it on paper like that. So I really got immersed into like taking all these podcasts and lessons and cones in, and then try to spit them back out. Um, in a script and I just kept giving him pages and giving and I think he was finally like dude is this thing gonna end you know so <laughs> yeah I think it was about oh um I'm trying to I mean by the time they did get to the club like when they first got to the club I I was in this space where how much farther can he take this shit like yeah, and then and then by the time I finished the book and then knowing that you have a part two coming out, I was just like, this is like one giant, it, it does feel, I mean, of course it has the vibe of it because you incorporate music into the whole thing, but it feels like being at a rock and roll concert. That's the whole vibe of the book. And there's, I really can't think of a book that I've read that feels like that. It feels like you're just tripping at a rock and roll concert the whole time. So like, I mean, bravo, you, you managed, <laughs> well, you managed to find a way to bring a, a, a real visceral feeling to the experience of a comic. Um, and it, that includes, you know, bringing music in. So that's, yeah, awesome. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that all down to my writing. I feel like James's art has a very kinetic rock and roll, you know, it's, it's I, I really couldn't imagine doing this book with anybody else. That first yeah. book, you know? Yeah. I mean, it was just, he's just the perfect artist for it. I think he nailed it. So you said you were listening to um, Buddhist podcasts and co on mm -hmm. and shit like that. What were some of your, uh, I mean, obviously we have like Machine Man and Son of Satan and, um, you know, other Marvel style, you know, books that were an influence. What were your other influences that you kind of drew from for this? Oh, um, just the whole punk rock. Uh, punk rock vibe you know all just I just love music and I just I just all these you know crazy movies all repo man whatever just like condense everything down and just like try to focus it on on to into the scripts so just I mean I love all that old creepy and eerie stuff hell um, yes hell all the yes. Mobius you know all the Mobius all that humanoids kind of that vibe um Alexis Zeritz um Space Riders book. I mean, I think mm. that's, that's so a good rad. One. You really know what good I mean? One. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's on my shelf. Um, um, a lot of manga. You know, that, that's more recent. I've been the last few years. It's been this has been so bored with American comics for the most part. You know, if, unless I buy them from people that are in that Facebook group or I find on Instagram or something. I mean, I still go to the comic book store and drop a ton of money. Don't get me wrong, but it's like. 
uh, Marvel and DC aren't getting much of it, you know. Yeah. I've said this before. Every time they put out a new Ghost Rider book, I fucking give them money, but I hate it. <laughs> you know, it's terrible. I'm reading this book now. It's just absolutely dreadful. You know so what they're doing. Is that? Yeah, I have no. I haven't picked up a Marvel and DC book in forever. Good for you. Yeah. Um. I mean, I I I kind of feel bad because I do care about the characters and i want to contribute but at the same time i don't want i i can't really afford to give my money to something that i'm not going to receive anything back from you know right they're too um, expensive they're too expensive and they're not the characters we kind of grew up with anymore they just just endlessly recycling the same ideas you know yeah. it's another another secret invasion is already on us it's like didn't they just do that like I don't even know how long ago it was 15 years ago or something now yeah but. yeah yeah so speaking of your collection before we sure. get further into enlightenment um i'm i'm looking at your shelves and i'm drooling <laughs> um so that, that's why i set the camera up here always yeah you you seem to have uh, quite the wide variety of tastes for sure um so you mentioned ghost rider but what what other you know comics do you see not just as an influence for tales for enlightenment but that you see as like some of the best works that anytime you think of like really good comics like what is it you mentioned creepy eerie yeah all those sort of stuff all those vampirellas those early vampirellas all those spanish artists and stuff yeah um you know i've been reading a lot of manga hold on one second i have the stack here that i keep just in case you were going to ask me what my earliest comics were, I'll just tell you anyways. Oh, this, hell yes. This this one here, this uh, 2001, yes. that might have been that might have been my first comic. I have that issue. It wasn't it's, my first comic, but I, I have that issue. It's such a great it, issue. Uh, there's a few comics here that might have been, you know, they're all from like 78 or something, 77. So they're all like in that era, you know, the... 2001 this uh reprint of captain america 105 oh hell um, yes i read that you know a million times as a kid um a couple of these are in bags and boards which i actually don't believe in but i just went to a um a comic show uh, the mohegan sun connecticut show and um don glutt who is the writer of um, these dr specter <sighs> comics he was there so i had him sign it so that's the only reason it's in a bag is because it was for transport. But um, you, you, do you know these comics? Yes. I feel like you'd love these. Oh, fuck yes. Yeah. yeah. I need more of them in my collection for sure. Right. Well, Dark Horse did a uh, reprint of like four hardcovers. And you can get the first three, but the fourth one, they must have like printed 10 of them or something. And it's like 400 bucks on eBay all the time. So it's I had them. So, so I have one through three. I mean, though, I have every issue of this because I'm a freak. So I have the hardcovers, too. Whatever. Oh, yeah. And this is another one he wrote that was an early comic of mine. Oh, beautiful. So, so I had him sign that one, too. Sweet. But yeah, all these early, um, you know, obviously big influence. Yep. You know, and then um, I know you're a big indie uh, power comics guy. Yes. So, oh, my God. I love Damn Log. That's so yeah, fucking he, awesome. So he's... Uh, I'm going to say his name wrong because I always do. Ragne Nayes yeah. is the, is the uh, author of this, and he's got a story in the upcoming book. I saw that. But, I saw that. Holy but, shit. Um, yeah. So uh, super psyched, uh, you know, but I was big into it. So in like the mid 80s, all that power comics kind of stuff. Love it. I yeah. know you're a big fan, right? Oh, huge, huge. I've got, I mean, and I, anything that Floating World's going to be putting out um, for, with uh, with the Power Comics crew. So the new uh, Lance Stanton and uh, Vindicator, like I'm like Vendetta. All, Vendetta, yes, Vendetta. So, That's like, so I'm getting it all. I'm getting it all. So I actually personally know Steve, like we're local to each other. Nice. I've gone to, I've gone to his house. And if you think this collection is something, this kid, I'm, I would say kid, he's a little bit older than me, but incredible collection. Okay. Incredible. I, things are starting to come together for me. I feel the network of the universe starting to congeal in my mind. So you and Steve, like that, you know each other and, and live close to each other. So here, it's all yeah. coming together, man. So, <laughs> so, so for the book, you know, obviously I have that giant pinup uh, gallery. 
Mm -hmm. When I was still writing the book, I would I went through and made a list of all the people that kind of were influences and I, you know, like Ragne and, and stuff. And I wanted to reach out and get in touch with. And Steve, I didn't know him. Um, I knew he was local. I knew he had at one time gone to the same comic store as me. Um, we're talking about Steve McArdle for anybody who doesn't know. The, the one uh, and only Steve McArdle. I think that's dropping from Floating World September 20th, uh, his trade yep. paperback. Yep. Um, so I had him on my list and I kind of like Googled him and stuff. And I couldn't really get a, you know, as far as my stalker skills, I couldn't really get a good address for him as, because I'm not opposed to like, like Richard Corbin. I wrote, I hand wrote him a letter to try to get him involved and like send it. It's like a two page handwritten letter and stuff. And he Whoa. was, you know, he, he emailed back was like, yeah, I'm sure everybody would love a Richard Corbin, you know, cover, but I don't pin up, but I'd never have time to do my own thing which is, you know but i was like well maybe steve might be more attainable anyways so um my a couple of my friends well my one my one friend had i owned the comic book store that i was friends with for years and years and years we set up at like a little elks club show a couple regular customers come by everybody's talking i don't know his name he leaves and um my buddy goes oh steve mccardle was such a nice guy you know i was like that was Steve McArdle. So next time he, you know, I hit him up on Facebook. I was like, told him this whole story. He's got a pinup in that first book. Um, super nice guy. We got together a couple of times at his place. It's just, he's got original art on the walls, toys, pinball machines. Like he's the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. He seems like he would be a totally nice guy for real. Um, yeah. Yeah. Love it. Can't wait for it. As soon as they announced that I, and there was available for any kind of pre-order, I was like, boom, I'm there. Right. Yeah. Um, so cool. That's awesome. That's, <laughs> that's so cool. Love it. Um, uh, well, uh, the other thing I was, you know, just kind of like segueing from that is, I mean, I can't even like, we can't even touch on volume two yet because my God, you're blowing me away. But just even in the first volume, the number of pinups, I feel like every time I even flip through this, I find a new, I find a new gallery piece that I just wasn't aware of. This that was so much content. So that was the hope, you know, I don't expect somebody to sit down and look at 109 pinups page after page after page. I want them to keep coming back, opening up, this is cool. Go. I have an index there with their name, their social media, the yep. country they're from or whatever. You know, I wanted to show how worldwide we were and, um, you know, and just kind of flip through it once in a while and look at these over and over. You know, that was the idea. How did you uh, are you just that well connected? Have you just attended conventions after a convention? You just know, I mean, or did you just reach out to everybody you could? Yep, it's just basically doing that. You know, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. So yeah, just hit up people, see if they're interested. You know, I believe at one time you said you were interested. I mean, I you know what? I was actually working on a piece, um, right. and I have one like halfway done, and then like other projects got in the way, yep. and I was just like, "There's no way I'm going to be able to fulfill this." Um, I want to, but and <laughs> I, it's one of those this is one of those re my regrets it sits on my <laughs> shelf as a regret of like i could have been in that and i i passed up if i could have just finished that one damn <laughs> um so um i told i was honored that you were you know asking that i could um be in it but uh yeah so you you really don't have a time like uh, well i'm like kind of getting at is there any of these connections that you started forming friendships from and that you're really close um to some of these amazing artists um i wouldn't say like we're super close but you know just messaging back and forth and stuff yeah. i don't think it's to the same level where you guys talk about um the connections you made on image grand design or whatever where mm -hmm. people really like you know, you guys really seem to be, you know, thick as thieves. So like when you had Ben Granoff on, you know, I yeah. felt like, you know, you were you guys were totally in touch and in sync. But no, nothing like that. Yeah, but there was a kind of a community that formed um, that, you know, from all that somehow. Um, and I don't know just, if that could ever be replicated again, but. Right. I mean, I not just image grand design, but the whole that whole group, the cartoonist cafe Brinkside Seas group, I mean, it's like the most positive comics, positive group 
on the internet. Like everybody, there's really no shit talking. If it is, like, cut down pretty quick. You know, yep. people. You know, people just like this isn't what we're here for. You know, move on. Yeah, read the room. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just it's it's the best thing that came. I mean, I'm not here to bash Jim and Ed. You know, but I haven't watched a video in a while. Um, the group is the best thing that came out of kayfabe for me agree you know yep i mean i'm super into that show um living the line right now have you seen that no yeah it's sean robinson and carson gerber uh, yeah it's um where's my note pen <laughs> <laughs> yeah living the and, line yeah living the line um he's right now carson so there's like two guys so sean and carson and carson um has been doing like uh one man reviews he calls it where he just looks at a book for like 10 and 15 20 minutes or something but they're like and i mean i know a lot of weird books and i try to really stay on top of just by being present you know um the new stuff and he's showing stuff that i i don't you know i've never seen it's you know i mean i'm not bashing jim and ed i think they did great things i think they do great things i still love like when they had my food on yeah. for uh, interviews i mean I, i'll watch every interview no doubt mm -hmm. but i'm just not in it to see another you know let's look at wizard issue whatever or yeah you know i think they could pay, i'm not i'm not here to give them advice yeah do, they seem to be doing just fine <laughs> yeah they're doing good <laughs> um, no i will check that out i tried to when i first started this channel i started to j just basically do little mini reviews of yeah just comics that weren't necessarily obscure but just stuff i knew that nobody else would really cover even people that are into into like hardcore indie stuff just mm -hmm. kind of these like forgotten about black and white 80s you know books um and it's kind of evolved into really this actually it just because i started I started reviewing books of people that were in this community, um, like indie stuff that I really appreciated. And then I, I can't remember who it was, but somebody hit me up and said, Hey, would you like to have a conversation? And it just kind of, this is where it went. Right. Um, but I, my hopes was to kind of start, like, I feel like that there needs to be a comics historian that can just like, there's plenty of books out there about the mainstream industry, but I don't I don't I don't see a whole lot really about the independent industry and just some of these people there, there's some like s total legends that are forgotten about even some that have touched the mainstream like Gene Day is a, one that comes to mind for me um, his work on Master of Kung Fu you know back in the day you know was you know legendary and then his brothers David Day and Dan Day you know they're still doing stuff now um, but they're just there's these little gems, you know, that, you know, they had in like the mid 80s and whatnot. And then they've been kind of forgotten about. And it's like, let's not forget about these people. Damn logs, another like item that, you know, I would like to cover. I mean, but, Rick, Rick Veach isn't forgotten, but I love that you were able to like meet up with him and talk with him. That is that I, was a I, cool part of Wizard 2. I'm going to put a. Uh, uh, I cause so I recorded the whole interview and I still have it and I'm going to make it as a session like this and I'm going to put it out as a video pretty soon. Um, I just nice. wanted to give enough time between Wizard number two releasing sure. and that um, that was life changing for me, man. Like Rick Veach is um, you manifested that shit. Yeah, I, he, not only is he just a solid dude, you know, he's not there's no ego and there's no well, I've been in the industry for He's just a normal guy. Yeah. And that's the, that's the vibe I got. Yeah. And, but also we could sit and talk about esoteric shit all day. I mean, the stuff in the interview, I even had to edit out a lot of just like conversations that just went in weird places. I'm like, you so got my vibe. Fuck. <laughs> like, where have you been my whole life? So, um, yeah. Well, let's, let, let's, swoop this back around to you so how, how happy have you been with just even tales to enlighten volume one and its reception like where i mean you're a household name now matt king <laughs> absolutely not a household name <laughs> legend in his own mind um no i'm i'm thrilled you know i've said this before uh 
I made this book with James, like for me, you know, um, the fact I would be crushed if people didn't like it for sure. But the fact that people like it, it's like the icing on the cake, but I really made it like exactly kind of my vision of what I wanted, you know, in, in a collaboration, at least, you know, I mean, if I could draw it, I would have drawn it, but who's going to draw better than James? Sorry. Yeah. So, um, I mean, so you've had people on before. So I said this the other night on an interview, um, uh, back to Ben Granoff when you talked to him and I wrote this down from his interview and he was like, I don't have it in front of me, but it was something like, are we in this for capitalistic dreams and Eisner awards? Or are we in this for creative fulfillment? Yep. And, you know, and then the interview I was on, the guy's like, both. I'm like, yeah, both if you can do it. But I know I can't do it. You know, I don't have, I'm not overflowing with ideas other than this property. You know, I I don't have like, I mean, I could do a Batman bootleg book with Tony Sedani someday. We'll see. <laughs> but um, uh, like, again, that's just another riff on, you know, it's not really an original idea. And I have an idea for the third book of this series, but uh, it's not, it's not, I'm not leaving my day job to, to make comics. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, I, I think that it's that creative fulfillment aspect is definitely felt. It, it just goes back to, and I think Ben and I talked about it. My theory is that if you are just, you don't have to have any kind of special skill set. You don't have to have training. If you are just pouring what you love out onto the page one way or the other, and you're having a good time doing it, then you're you're going to create some amazing shit that people are going to love and absorb because they can feel that energy. Well, that's um, what it that's what it feels like happened with this, at least. Yeah, yeah. And it definitely didn't feel like you were trying to chase any awards or, or trying to like move up the rungs of the weird hierarchy that exists in the mainstream <laughs> industry. Like you're not trying to get noticed by someone at Marvel and DC to be like, Hey, no. I want like, you're just having a good fucking time. And that's why this book kicks ass. And it's probably one of the top independent, independent books out there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you want, we can, kind of just maybe randomly start scanning through some of the preview images. So I know you've got Tales to Lighten Volume 2 now, which yep. you're making even bigger. Yeah, like so <laughs> September 1st, so September 1st, the Kickstarter for Tales to Enlighten, the new uh, uh, the New Testament, we're calling it. Yep. It's a um, 500 plus page anthology this time, not a single story. Um, 30, I say 30 different artists, but uh, on story art, but there's actually more between um, my buddy Ken. Well, we can get to that after. I'll tell you all about him. Um, <laughs> and I'm actually cooking up um, a very controversial AI illustrated story that's uh, gonna like make people mad or or maybe happy. Who knows? Um, but <laughs> so the, and then there's like another hundred pinups. Um, there's more, uh, the crazy fake ads and sermons, propaganda, design aesthetics, and, uh, a recipe or two. So that's one thing I didn't mention before. Part of the experience is all the fake ads that you have. It was, it, it, it definitely, you know, you mentioned like repo man and some of this older stuff, like you, the, it, it feels like in a way, even though the art is brand new and it's not like. He, he's necessarily going for any sort of retro feel. I mean, kind of, sort of, but the ads so, add this element to like feeling like I'm reading a like a magazine, like a comics anthology right. magazine from the 80s. It's like amazing. So he doesn't switch up his style to fit like that retro mode, but like we riffed on um, the Megaforce ad or the ROM yep. the Space Knight ad, you know, yep. things like that. So this time, um, there's not a lot of illustrated ads like that. It's more um, uh, fake religion kind of uh, cult like propaganda that from 70s material that I took and then just remixed and kept a lot of the old photographs or the old, uh, you know, just remixed the, the copy and stuff. So, but 
yeah, a bunch of that stuff this time too. You're always trying to suck us in, man. <laughs> trying to suck us into that cult. But be careful, ladies and gentlemen. If you pick up this book, you might just start randomly sending Matt money out of your bank account. Wouldn't that be something? There's like an automatic transfer <laughs> for some reason going to you every month. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. So Tales to Enlighten 2, you want to drop a little bit um, of what we're going to get to see for volume two and uh, we'll uh, take a look at some of the pages here. Sure. Um, so the idea behind the anthology is, uh, I've said before, sequels, prequels, side stories, secret origins and spinoffs. It's all just... Um, using the characters that we made in volume one and just kind of expanding on them. Uh, one story we fill, fill in a plot hole from book one. Um, so originally in book one, I had my friend Tony Sedani, my friend Ryan Miller. These people were like wanted to like contribute. And I was like, yeah, let's do a backup story. You can do uh, seven pages. You can do nine pages. And then I would all of a sudden I had 10 backup stories. And it was like, this book's going to be 500 pages. And I was like, we can't do that. So we let's do James's story. No, we can't do that with all these pinups. So let's do James's story. Uh, my friend Dave Gordon in the first book has five pages. And then the pinup gallery and some nonsense. And that's like 300 plus pages there. I'll take all those backup stories. I'll shift them to book two. I'll write some new stuff. And then we'll put it all together. And we'll have another 300 page book. But that's not what has ended up with that 500 page book anyways. So just fuck it. Let's put it out as 500 pages. <laughs> it's you know, going to take me a year to read that book. The, the worst part about it is, you know, this book on the shelf, my OCD is really going to be upset when the next book is bigger. You know what I mean? Bigger. <laughs> They're yeah, not the exact same Because side. then the text is going to like, what do I, so what do I do the text down the center of that's what I think what, that's what I'll do. So it stays the same because uh, my friend Travis, who laid out the book Hunchback Graphics on um, on Instagram, big help, really helped me with some design stuff, helped me lay out all the book and get everything print ready. Superstar. Um, I told him ahead of time, let's plan out both spines like together. So, mm. you know, let's think ahead. So we did. And then it's still I fucked that up. So we'll see. <laughs> well, speaking of that, um, and I, I'm not saying this to knock my independent sisters and brothers out there because I'll buy that shit any day over mainstream, right? But this book on the shelf, it is a, such a professional quality that it blends it. Like you can tell the books on my shelf, like if I bring my kids in and I've done this sometimes, point out what you think is mainstream and what you think is independent. They can pretty much pick out the independent stuff pretty quick. This this, uh, this looks like a mainstream book. It it feel it, like it has that, and I don't know if it's just the way you've done the text, um, the quality of the spine, which also is amazing because, I mean, I've been through this thing dozens of times, and nothing bends, nothing creases. Nice. It's like perfect. So I went through ONS Printing, uh, which is in Kentucky. Um, it's Andy Schmidt and his wife, who Andy Schmidt was a Marvel writer, editor, maybe for DC too. Anyways, and he wanted to put out his own stuff and then people started coming to him. So they have contacts in Korea and China. So they're like a middleman. So I went through them and then they send the stuff to Korea and China and then it comes back. But I picked out that paper stock. I want, you know, I wanted that matte finish, that heavier paper. Um, yeah, and it's just I think they were doing IDW's books, so they are, you know, for they are for real, you know. And then a big part of it is my brother is a graphic designer. He helped me make a ton of those ads and stuff. And he is a super perfectionist. Like I'd be like, that's good. He's like, no, that's not good. Let's do, you know, if we're gonna do it, let's go all the way, you know. And he's got three kids, a wife, no time, and I'm like, you know come on come on come on come on but he would made it great travis again uh, he has his own design firm like you know he's for real so i was just like teamed up you know i got the greatest artists i got the greatest photoshop guys you know it's yeah. it's it all helped really make it come come true you know make it happen yeah perfect 
perfect conglomeration of everything that you needed to make a high quality product. That's uh, what you get for being a cult leader. Okay, let's <laughs> share. Let's see, I'm gonna try this out, ladies and gentlemen, because I've never done this before while recording. And I'm gonna throw this immediately. I'm gonna try to put our faces on here though too, but what's gonna be funny is our faces are gonna disappear probably anytime I try to flip through. That's okay, that, that art there is um, part of a, we did the three part uh, origin of how Jesus Christ becomes the mega trip. So right there, he still has human arms where in the future he has skeleton arms. So that's the third part of uh, his origin story art by Bill Couture, who I met at Boston Comic Con in 2017. Um, really? So, I thought yeah. the, I thought this might have been Chris Anderson. Holy no. shit. So that's Bill Couture. I met him at uh, Boston Comic Con. I was just walking around Artist Alley and um, the colors. He had a giant, giant poster that was like all this psychedelic coloring and stuff. And it just like drew me over. I was like loving, he had done a Shaolin Cowboy um, meets Hellboy bootleg comic that he had there. And it was just like the wildest stuff. Um, and I was started showing him James's work and we just stayed in touch. And uh, I had him draw this short story, which ended up being like 19 pages. <laughs> mm, wow. Yeah. yeah. This, uh, when I started scanning through, I mean, everything mm -hmm. looks fabulous, but um, I, I, this was my first major stop where I was, yeah. where I kind of thought to myself, I want a fucking poster of this. <laughs> um, the, yeah. the colors are fascinating. Yeah. I, I'm a sucker for that kind of, you know, neon poster kind of coloring palette. Mm -hmm. I wish, I wish I could color like that. Um, to be as, honest, as crazy as, as his art is, if you follow his Instagram, he has even wilder ideas. He's great. Like after we finish this, he has another friend, John um, Robo Seven. He goes by on Instagram, and they're good friends. And I wanted um, I wanted to get John involved too, so I, I teamed them up to come up with an idea of how to get a few few more pages out of Bill, uh, because Bill really didn't want to just draw anything. He wanted just so um, he wants to be like an idea farm. And uh, they came up with I, I came up with the idea of how about doing this? We call it the Black Magic Parasite, which is like um, an occult Rodan. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, how about you do like a series of three movie posters like with this character? And they were like, yeah, yeah. They came back and they did, you know, the um, dinosaur attacks cards. Yeah. They did, oh, yeah. They did, a, yeah. they did a they did a riff on that. It was it's just. I couldn't be more proud of what everybody's. I think this book is phenomenal. Just the talent, you know. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna quote Ben Granoff again from that interview he did with you. He's he said, easily quotable. <laughs> he said, "Sometimes the comics you make, you know, people lift you up, and sometimes you lift other people up." You know, paraphrasing what he said. But like, so Bill doesn't really have any comics out there. He draws on his Instagram all day, but there's no comics, you know. So here's 19 pages of wow. me putting Bill's work out there, you know? But, <laughs> this, so this is his first 19 pages of comic? Yeah, I mean, he's got he's had a couple little, you know, like I said, he had a bootleg um, Hellboy meets Shaolin Cowboy. Uh, but overall, like, there's nothing you can go out and buy from him, you know? I, I would say I hate him, but we're all about lifting people up here in session. And also so he's like the nice also he's like the nicest guy I've ever met. That's awesome. <laughs> that's oh by the way, uh for anyone, trigger warning to anybody that gets offended easily that might watch my channel. And if my kids are watching, you need to fucking close down the browser now. Um <laughs> in case we hit on something. Um so, so this this on the right is um Erwin Papa. Uh, Erwin Papa's fucking great. He's so good. I'm so glad he wanted to like pitch in uh, and um, get in on this craziness, you know? Yeah, he is. He's one of those that I have kind of pegged to maybe do a commission for one of my books in the near future. He's um, great. So 100%. that's what I that's what I did. I, I contacted him about a pinup, which is in the first volume. But um, 
and then I was just not satisfied. I just it was like the one of the better better pinups in the whole thing. I was like, what about some sequential pages? You know, mm-hmm. what if what if Jesus you know travels back in time after he gets this helmet to try to learn how to use the helmet, meets up with Judas, obviously forgives him here in the bottom. He's hugging him, and then uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I always thought kung- Judas had a bad rap anyway. Yeah. So Judas is training at this Kung Fu school with Jesus for a year. That's awesome. <laughs> I always liked Judas. Um, I'm a Gnostic in that sense. I, I like the, I read the gospel of Judas and I was like, Hey, Judas was actually a good guy. Dogmatic Christianity fucked us up. This is nice. We got some yeah. like, Kirby influence there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so with J- and the script for James, I was really kind of very rigid with what I was looking for. You know, I w- had in the initial pages, I had thumbed out, thumbnailed out myself, like I knew better. You know, which is very stupid. Yeah. Um, and then eventually, we got to a better part of collaboration where you know I would tell him what I want, and he would make it better. But um, so with these short stories, I tried to just go. You know, I'd be like, all right, Kirby machinery. You know, it says this, you know, way less rigid. Mm -hmm. And it just ended up, you know, working out better for everybody. So fun. So is your, you said your brother, your brother-in-law, I can't remember his name. Is he doing, is is he doing all of the ads and stuff again? Is this his work? So so on the, the one on the right is his work. Um, I rewrote a TDK ad there and then there's some personal ads on the right and um, there's it's just more work than he has time to do. So I met um, Jeff Robertson who goes by Simon Maggots on Instagram and he was telling me how much he liked the ads and stuff. I was like, I need somebody to do, to do more of them. And he was like, okay. So he's really been pitching in. He has a, um, he puts out his own comics uh, for him and his buddies, Contraband Media. They just came out with some stuff, but he's been really pitching in and helping me out on some of this stuff. So the one on the left is from Jeff. The one on the right is from my brother. Nice. Yeah. Love the design work. I, you know, this is really truly is what made Tales to Enlighten a transportive experience. It just, I mean, you're just in the world. Um, and, yeah, I, I, it, it, it kind of helped me. So a couple of things. It kind of helped me realize how much ads in, in the comic books back in the day really did influence me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and how much they were a part of that experience. And also, to be honest, you inspired me that. And so I'm going to riff off of you a little bit. But my next issue is Second Up Presents maybe try to develop my own kind of fake ads. No, I don't, sure. I'm not going to copy what you're doing, but you just kind of inspired me. Like <laughs> what would a psycho not presents comic back in the day? Like what kind of, you know, ads well, that's would they a- have for like, I, you know, local ayahuasca brews or whatever, or some shit, man. Right. So well, you well, just, well, like you said, like the, the ads were an integral part of those comics we were reading. And yeah. so was the paper and the yeah. look, you know, so yeah. that's why I have all these aged looking ads and stuff. Yep. The one on the left, my buddy Dave Gordon, who did the back, uh, the backup story in issue one, came back for a page, and the page on the right is Tony Farrow, Tony who you Farrow. just, who you just had on. So, I so J- James, Tony. James sets up the story uh, at the very beginning of the book with four pages that um, the whole crew they come across Megatrips um, short box of comics, and they start looking through it, and it's like. The comics that they find are the stories that we see in this book. That's but James, awesome. James was really only available for four pages. So I wanted to keep coming back to that, you know, where they're looking at the. So Tony does like six pages in between, like some of these stories to. To keep showing that they're still reading and talking about comics kind of on a meta level. I love his shit. If you haven't checked out his uh, books yet, man, you you totally need to. You would love them. He's great. Did you um did you end up watching that Kickstarter video? Yes, I did. So the music is from his band. I took um he posted a TikTok video that he he like reblogged or whatever you call it on Facebook and it was just them jamming with like this um baseline groove and stuff. And I was like 
I just messaged him. I was like, listen, if you guys ever record that, that is the vibe I'm looking for for um, my next Kickstarter thing. And it just worked out that they had just recorded it in time. He had mixed it down just in time for me to give it to the video guy. He's like, do you want the vocals? I was like, no, I want an instrumental version, you know, so we can. So the you vocalist know, got screwed out, but whatever. He is so humble because I was trying to get out of him. Like, obviously you are, uh, uh, you know, you're making music. Like, what are you working on? And like, oh, not much of anything. Yeah, he's, he's just, just <laughs> he's like, oh, it's just a hobby. <laughs> So these pages here are by uh, Marcus Cripps, who was the one who introduced me to, um, he sent me the invite to the Facebook group for the ringside seats. He's like, I didn't even know anything about it. So nice. He, he, he's a big fan of wrestling and stuff. So, yep. I mean, I haven't watched wrestling since the days of the Von Erickson stuff, really. <laughs> so I did my best with remembering all my Ric Flair kind of, you know, shit talking and we came up with this where the lizard Batman comes to the bootleg, oh, yeah. Namor, bootleg Namor universe and they fight each other for the title. Yeah, this he, is just a fun one. There's no philosophy in this one. It's, it looks fun as hell. He's got a yeah. really, he's got um, a really nice uh, sequential language here. And again, um, like the nicest guy, like a lot of these people, I can't believe they working with such a dick like me, you know, it's like, I guess like, dude, you're too nice. You know? Yeah. You're so horrible. <laughs> I will say, and for those that have listened to my channel, I probably, you know, repeated this a million times, but I, I, I tried to dip my toe into getting into the comic industry about, well, my son was really young. So almost 20 years ago. And just, every, I didn't, there wasn't a whole lot of, we didn't have the online community we do now, but I just, there wasn't a whole lot of nice people. Right. <laughs> um, and it was really daunting and it seemed really closed and it not, and that people didn't really support one another. And now it's like a new golden age. In, and in a also, way. also, you're not dealing with like pros. I don't, I doubt, you know what I mean? You're, you're doing, you're talking to people who are doing, you as this they love this as much as you do you know what i mean right, the, right. The, everybody in that group that's a creator this is like their passion you know it's right like the flash it's like the flash dance song i quote all the time you know take your passion and make it happen like do it you know yeah yeah 100 percent, man the one on the left is a letter i remixed it was a uh letter to a u.s senator or a letter from a u.s senator who had gotten who had called some um, the Jews for Jesus a uh, a cult, and they got all mad and sent him a letter, and he like writes an apology. So I remixed it, and then the one on the right is uh, a remix of a um, New York City sex club in the seventies ad. So this is like truly you are DJ Mega. That's like what <laughs> you do. You take all these elements and you remix them into this incredible yep. new product that we yep. can all dance to. This is uh, Ryan Miller, who uh, does a book semi-regularly. Like he's probably hasn't done an issue in years, but called Man Gull. Um, it's huh. about a. It's like <laughs> it's like a uh, a seagull with human arms. It goes around killing things and stuff. Nice. It's fucking rad. It's so it's so rad. I'll have to check that out. I have not checked him out before. Yes, yeah, Stockpile Comics. Ryan Miller on Instagram. Holy yeah, so this, shit. I love so this, the colors on this as well. Okay. So, All right, well, let's, let's talk about that for a second. Ryan uh -huh. started drawing this. He was the very first artist that was going to do a backup story. He started in 2017. He just finished it, um, I think, back in May, maybe. Um, his buddy Joe Daxberger lettered it. And then Dan Lee, who is in the, he's in the cartoon, he's in the group. He he colored it for me with that black light coloring scheme. Nice. Yeah. Dan, again, another super nice guy that like just loves comics, you know? Yeah. This <laughs> Chef's Kiss. <laughs> Chef's yep. Kiss. It's great. All right, let's take a look about like let's see. Let me, let me try to pinpoint something else that's not as sequentially next to it. And I'm gonna randomly Oh, this looks wild. Okay. That's uh, a guy named Darren Vader, who 
I think in like 2017, 2018 for Inktober was doing um, these shorts, like children's stories, or it was looked, it looked like a children's story about Ed Sheeran and he would do a couple spot illustrations. And I was like, I love the idea behind this. Let's do my characters in that storybook style. And if you scroll back one page, mm -hmm. that right at the top on the right there, it says Matthew, Merry Christmas, 1973. That's from a book I have from my parents that I scanned and then we put that in there. <laughs> So it's it's just a it's it's just super attention to detail because I'm crazy, but like I just want it exactly how I want it, you know? Yeah, no, it makes it. I mean that attention to detail takes it from just you know, being something that someone just kind of like pushed out real quick, you know, to just get a product out. Right. To like this you know, I'm, this is this is real. You're in someone else's world. You're but in I'm just burdening myself and everybody else with so many extra steps it's like oh, i had to go get that book from my mom's house and scan it and then give it to my buddy travis and then he sent it back i was like no it doesn't look quite right can you do it like you know what i mean like so you have that luxury as a cult leader i imagine <laughs> to be able to have everybody do exactly what you want them to do yeah all right, let's take a look at one more here. Do you know who this is? This is Shaky Kane, isn't it? Hell yeah. Fucking God, yes. I'm so glad he's, we landed on this. How did so you good. land Shaky Kane, man? That is incredible. I, I literally just reached out to him on Facebook and said, what's your page rate? You know? <laughs> <laughs> would you, would you Would you do 10 pages for me? That's amazing. So, look so, at that. The, the, like, just even these first two panels, yeah. I'm, I'm sold. So the characters there are Manju Shri, who is the Bodhisattva of Wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, in the center, this is my buddy Ken. Um, he created a character called Kor, the Barbarian, which is like a very John Buscema, like blonde haired barbarian that he created back in like 82, 1982. We, we both went to the same comic store. He brought in the art like a few years back to show me what he had done when he wanted to be um, a comic book artist before he ended up going to the like real world, I guess, and just decided he couldn't do it or didn't want to do it. Or, you know, he kind of took that, you know, had that choice of which road to take and he didn't do it. But so he showed me this character and I was like, I need a father figure for Sam, the grandson of Satan. Do you mind if I use your character? He's like, no, that's fine. So I ended up, Andrew Buck did the origin story. Oh, um, yes. I, I love Andrew Buck. Another and amazing we'll psychedelic have, artist. We'll have to find him before we go. Yeah. And um, and I also wrote Ken's character, Core, into this into this story for Shaky Kane. So. That's incredible. Yeah. What a crew. Yeah, There's, Shaky Kane has this... Um, <laughs> I'm, it, it sounds bad when you say this simplistic quality to his work, but yet it's still so insanely psychedelic at the same time. Yeah. Usually you think when you think psychedelic, you think a lot of detail and a lot of weird craziness and it's, it's minimal. Yeah. Minimal. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. He's really good. If I felt weird writing the script for him, like I was like this guy, because he really is probably the most out of all the story artists kind of the most famous quote you know mm -hmm. but um i was yeah. like i hope i hope the script doesn't seem too like too wonky for him oh i'm sure he, he obviously had a blast <laughs> i think i hope so i hope look so. at this <laughs> this is perfect it got, we got some thunder vibes here with that you the, the flaming sword fuck yes yes the sword of manju mm. cuts both ways that's right <laughs> this is amazing holy shit yeah wow so much what's, the what's whole, funny the is that. i feel like we're giving away so much stuff but we're we're not we haven't yeah. even probably touched five percent of the book yet you know i i was super I played it super close to the vest with all the stuff from the first book where i didn't want and even this book i don't show a lot you know this is the most i've shown anybody ever but you know i didn't even want to send a pdf out to like different people but how you know, the whole, on the kayfabe 
Piscor always is talking. You know, he gives the shit away for on his Patreon for nothing. It's like, and it's, he claims it only helps him. So I guess you want to show people what's in it. You know. Yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, I actually have found that is whenever. I get an, a good amount of previews to what I'm getting. Cause I think most people want to own things in their hands. They, they want to have it. Um, certainly so, comic, certainly comic book collectors, especially yeah. of a certain, certain age, maybe not the new kids. I don't know, but I can't, I can't imagine being satisfied because I have this PDF right now. This is not going to satisfy me. Like, I don't right. feel like I have the product I want. When, I want the product in my when hand. I, That's part when of the I, experience. When you when you ordered the first book, and I was like, "Do you want to? You want a PDF?" You're like, "Nah, I'm sick of screens all day." You know, I don't yeah. read. I don't read any digital comics at all. You know. Plus, so. just like the weight of having something like that. Can you imagine having a 500 page volume that you're just like walking into a coffee shop with, and just <laughs> it, it's like it becomes a part, an extension of who you are. That's the way books are for me, whether it's like a regular book or comic. I mean, they they become this extra appendage. It's part of right. it's a spiritual experience for me, man. All right. Where's Andrew Buck? Let's take let's take one uh, final look at Andrew because he's, he's another a, person I would love to get a commission from. Someday. Andrew is um, maybe four stories past this, maybe. Let's see if I can eye it. You'll see it because it'll, st it'll stand out. Yeah, it's right after all that black and white art. It's like 20 pages of black and white art from Tengu Guru. Yeah, those that's there's 20 pages there. Oh god, that's that after that. That looks beautiful. Oh my god, that is beautiful. So, Holy so shit. Yeah, so and that's all on like I think it's bigger than 11 by 17 from the from the pictures he showed me. Um so this one I I, I can't even really take a writing credit on. I said I gave him the premise. Um so that mega trip helmet gets passed down through the generations from one you know one person to another can you do his this crazy body horror art like can you do three or four pages and the next thing i know he gave me 20 pages so this guy needs to be institutionalized <laughs> this crazy, is amazing crazy, crazy in a good way no pencils just right to ink as far as i know that's what it looks like whenever he shows a video that oh my god that is incredible yeah. this has the you know how like some of those I, I do you ever watch the power comics channel i mean we talked oh, about yeah. damn log and i'm yeah. obviously you probably do uh so yeah. that was a dumb question but no i do you know some of those books that where they talk about like the the artist just has that um detailed ferocity where you could tell they were just there for hours and just in their own world and to the point where you know it's a level of psychosis almost mm -hmm. that's how this feels and i mean that as an absolute compliment so i mean i don't know him i only know him on from online and stuff but he's posted pictures before where he's just um <laughs> He's in. <laughs> he's naked in his room with a ski with a ski mask on, <laughs> and he has art pinned up on all the walls, the ceiling, on the floor, and he's just inking, inking, inking. Okay, I've got to get this guy on my chip. What's his name again? Uh, Tengu Guru Guru T E N G U space G U R O. Yeah, so I don't know if, if you ever see my Instagram, I always share art from artists I love on my yep. stories, like yep. constantly. And he has one of those accounts that it's private because he keeps getting shut down all the time. So, <laughs> so I can't, so you're not, a, you know, you can't really share it without screenshotting it and stuff. So I don't want to get him in trouble, but oh he's, my God. Yeah, he's great. He's on Facebook too, but he shows, you know, videos of him drawing and just, He's really, he did a couple, I met him. He did a couple pinups for me for the first book. Oh my God. I, I'm kind of blown away. Um, he's great. He's that's, great. There's, there's so many good artists that we're not even going to have time to touch on. Yeah. You know, but well, it's we just, could be, we'll be here all day. We'll be, <laughs> we could be here. Okay. There's the Andrew stuff. Oh my God. He doesn't really do comics anymore either. He just does those commissions 
I, but you know, I commissioned this in 2018. This was going to be one of the original backup stories in book one that got I, shifted. I wish he would two. do more comics because Satanic Kill, too. Kick, Satana Kill kicked my ass. Oh, wasn't that great? I loved it. He's, yeah. he's just, he just, I mean, I'm at a point. I mean, I don't want to make a, this a whole bitch section, but, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not breaking even on these books. You know what I mean? I'm losing money. Yeah. And, and, you know, Andrew, same thing. He's like, it doesn't, it's not the time he spends. It's not cost efficient, you know? Yeah, I, so, I get it. I, I am too. I'm losing money, and, but. And I don't really know if he's ever done any collaborations other than this, but as, as, since you're a Power Comics fan, do you, are you a member of the Patreon? Um, so I was, and then they stopped posting for yeah, quite a while. Yeah, they a while. And so I stopped because I just, I yeah. I can't be throwing money at something that I'm not getting any kind of return. But I've been okay. kind of waiting. I've, been, I've had my ear to the ground. Okay. To see when so, they're going to start posting shit again. And then I'll, I'll totally jump back on. I don't know if you were a member when um, they had somebody took the John Tar fonts and um, the Lance Stanton fonts. Yes. And put them up. His name is uh, Colin Tendo on um, Instagram. I took those fonts and lettered the story. I uh, had Travis letter the story with those fonts. <laughs> so, I mean, there's so many like Easter eggs and stuff that you would, um, you know. That is like, uber detailed, man. Right? <laughs> that, you, you're kind of insane yourself. Right. In a good way. I'm just so, I'm saying that. So, there's, there's like two or three fonts that they released through that Patreon, and I took one and this was lettered and then there's another four pager that i use the other one the other font for i i would I, I, this splash page in and of itself i would i would pay money to have that as a poster you know my buddy dave told me i should i should be printing up posters and that it just seems like um so say i sell 400 books on kickstarter it's like how many people really want the poster is it worth the time to print it? And, you know, it's like I'm already doing, I mean, it's so entailed, like every self, you know, to fulfill everything. Yeah. It's like so I many moving parts. And this whole book has just been completely insane with, you know, 100 pinup artists, 30 plus story artists, you know, letters, colorists. It's just like <laughs> it's such a shit show. It's like I it's, when it came time to like, Dave was telling me you should really just print that as a poster, you know, people. And this thing you gotta what ship it separate in a tube or something. It's just like, yeah, yeah. as much no, as I, I love it. it. So I love Andrew so much that he did. I commissioned him to do the T-shirt design for the, you know. So we have a T-shirt coming out from him, but it's just his black and white style, it's one color on a black shirt, you know. Oh, nice, nice. But but I'm so happy to get these. I think he's that's nine pages in here of Andrew. Oh, 11 pages. I think it's 11 pages. Sorry, I was just sitting on that one page. Even then, this one page, it's like, this artwork is a reflection of my soul. It, <laughs> he is. It truly is. He's great. Holy God. Every time I get on one of these interviews with somebody, I always go on and on about him, you know? How again, can, how can again, you know? the nicest guy. Have you ever talked to him? I have not. I'm going to have to bring him yeah. on the channel. And Oh, man. He's, he's just the nicest guy. All these done with, like, markers and, you know, highlighters and stuff. Yeah, so, that's what I love about it is that this is this isn't digital, right? I mean, he, no. he just colors with markers, which, again, makes me insanely jealous. So the highest tier on the Kickstarter is his original art. I'm selling it all as a bundle and it's, it's all the, all the inks. He so it's a set of 11 pages. Uh, I think it's 11. I can't, I mean, I feel bad not knowing it offhand. Um, nine pages. It's nine pages. It's, um, uh, so the inks are on one on like crystal board and then he's Xerox is the inks and colors the Xerox. So there's a set of the colors too. So all is one bundle. And I, I, I mean, I'm asking a lot for it, but like, I think the caption, the picture says, I almost hope this doesn't sell so I get to keep them. Oh, hell you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How can you not ask a lot? Yeah. Um, that's, that's fucking amazing. Yeah. He's great. Holy shit.
that's 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 spread that's spread just (laughs) i can't i can't it's too much this i'm starting to feel the same way that i felt with your first volume where there's just so much cool shit i have to like take a break because it's just i almost get overstimulated it is so fucking good I hated putting word balloons over stuff like this, you know, yeah. I mean, everybody's stuff. It always hurts, like, because I've been looking at the original art and I'm seeing all the pages and, I'm, you know, and then I'm like, oh, now I have to cover up that with a word balloon. So that's an interesting process question. So you did the lettering for everyone? No, not for okay. everyone. A lot of people did their own. Um, Andrew specifically was like. I hope you don't want me to letter it because I hate, you know, he, he doesn't think he's good at it or whatever. He, he hates doing it. So we, you know, again, we did the that Power Comics font um, mm. and Travis did the lettering on this. But my friend uh, that Jeff Robertson I talked about before is helping me letter a whole bunch of stuff. Good stuff. He's great. <laughs> Do you want to look at Chris Anderson stuff real quick? Oh, yeah. I like Chris. I know you do. Yeah. He's uh he's my guy. Let me he's see if I can like f- he's probably share again. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Where are we at? So, he's probably another 50 pages past this maybe. I don't know. I know you had him on, so I knew you were a fan. Um, yeah, there, there's there's uh, so click on see that bottom on the left there. Click that one there. So that's Tony. That's Tony, and then next to it there's a guy named J S K, J S K A Y E, who is a um, a member of the group, and I had him do a fake. So Tony's again the meta stuff, and then there's a fake cover. If you go down, scroll down one page, there's a fake ad like that's the inside of the cover, and then this is Tony. Awesome. The, this is Tony Sidani's second story in the book. The first one he did like the Coke Knight origin story. The I second one, this is a riff on um, the Doctor Specter issues I was I was talking oh, about earlier. Okay. Yeah. So Hell this yeah. Is, this is like an evil Doctor Strange kind of character. We call him Doctor Outlandish, Satan Sorcerer. But awesome. Tony's great. I love this. <laughs> Holy I think you're really shit. gonna. I think you're gonna like this book, man. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so you're, I mean, you're... my kids, they don't need to go to college. Ah, uh, I, I can, I can splurge. I, I, I am finding that I've. Um, oh, right. I, I'm, I'm in this good problem. Just click, click on that one. I want to show you this real quick. This is a Ooh, guy from nice. Oh, this is a guy from Italy that does collage and photo manipulation his name is uh officina infernale and he i bought like 20 books from him and they're all in italian can't read a, a lick of it um it's burrows yeah and he's like hey can i do six pages and he wrote it too and i just helped him translate it like he translated and then i kind of translated the translation so that would another. be another excellent print right there, man. That <laughs> that William S. Burroughs with insectoid eyes. That's yep. language is a virus. That's so so Chris's awesome. Chris's story is the next one after that. If you just scroll down in the main PDF there. There's another one. Holy shit. Yeah. Kicking my ass. <laughs> so this is the one on the right is Chris's first page there. Which is that Thor issue where Thor's wrestling Hercules riff? Yep. So it's it's, that, it's our G, go, re- it's our Jesus with a young Jesus, you know. That's awesome. Uh, like a clone. <laughs> <laughs> because Jesus left his DNA all over the Club Enlightenment on the yeah. front, you know, in the last one. So these are Chris's pages. See, I think you know, you know, some of these artists that really appeal to me, like Chris and Tony, Andrew, is. I mean, I'm not knocking anybody that does digital art. It's it's cool. I've seen some great stuff, but knowing what I know on how to work like a, a brush, mm-hmm. an ink brush, and the guys that I know that are using ink brushes, um, it just I'm just like, man, how? Like it's so. I just admire their work so much more. Yeah. Now I know Chris sometimes does do digitally. So this do is you di- know. Th- 
This is all digital. Okay, so he did this one. Digital. He had a million projects going on, and he yeah. was just like, "Sometimes he has to yeah. because he yeah. is." But I can't really tell a difference. No, every once in a while, you like you'll see like if you if you um, don't scroll back, but it's like um, like a chain link fence where you know he just like hit uh, some button. Okay, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Kind of just hit the button or something. I'm, unless I'm wrong. I mean, yeah, Chris, you tell me, but yeah. This is so much fun. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. If you scroll past Chris's story, there's a guy that looks like the old creepy and eerie stories from the from the 70s. Oh, hell yeah. That's beautiful. I love, I don't know, there's some weird way in which he does, like, creatures and stuff. To uh, just, they have this, I, you know, like, I can almost feel like I can reach out and poke them. Yeah, he really nailed it. You know, I think he did 19 pages for me. That's amazing. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like scrolling through here and I'm just like, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. He, so, he's a hard work. He's definitely one of those cats that like, um, you yeah, know, that, he, that, he's, he's making this a full time gig. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That black and white art there. If you look at that, that's very reminiscent of, um, that creepy eerie vampirilla kind of vibe wow yeah that's doc zab santos zabalas that's Zabalos. incredible yeah is this so, is this a brush like yeah what's he, oh yeah what yeah he's yeah he's good <laughs> that's incredible mm -hmm. Yeah. Is he using He's, any kind of screen tones or is it just all inks? I, I think it's just inks. Holy shit. I, yeah. I love what you did to the the paper um yeah. for, the, for this one. Definitely yeah. that uh, it adds to that yeah. creepy eerie vibe. Excellent. Yeah. Quirk squirt. <laughs> My buddy Travis put that in the PDF as a placeholder. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah wow man matt king how how are you doing this i don't understand <laughs> I, I mean just even putting together um a little like four issue trade um with just a couple of gallery pieces was enough for me like how you're doing just like these 500 pages with the collaboration of all these artists i mean i can you know when i talked to eli when he put out wizard number two you know, he yeah. was in, he was in this place where he was like, I don't know if I'm ever going to do this again, man. <laughs> like, well, that, it is. That's what I tell everybody. This is it for me, man. This is it. This yeah. But it. you said something earlier about uh, part I, three. I, I did. I have, on note cards, I have a part three. But the artist I want to work with is Oleg Green. I sent you emailed him um, some stuff. He does like 30 pages in this book. Um, he's in Russia. He lives in Russia. And with the sanctions we can't even use paypal to pay them or anything like i so i can't really work with them for this one fuck i mean right at this point anyways you know have man fucking governments have your goddamn wars and leave us the fuck out of it exactly <laughs> jesus christ yeah that sucks man i'm sorry yeah so i have it all no carded out tony uh sedani expressed uh some sort of interest in doing a bootleg batman which i feel like i have a a unique twist on but um i don't want to say anything about that right now it's he's doing other stuff and i'm doing this so we'll see um yeah i, I mean i i emailed you a couple things if you wanted to look at the kenny's i don't know if you can pull that up right now but yep. that kenny is the guy from 1982 where these he scanned these these are the only authentically aged pages like the scans of the yellow paper are actually yellow because <laughs> it's you know 40 years old uh, yeah this but. is when i saw this i'm gonna really share it now is probably the most power comicsy exactly of the whole uh, yep. of of work that you you've sent so far that i've seen yeah and um man it took me back to being 12 <laughs> because it's it's actually authentic these 15 pages are what he drew for a, a story back in 1982 you got the ripped paper even it's it's legit i didn't add any effects or anything to it that's it 
Oh my god, <laughs> that's beautiful, isn't it? Isn't that I mean, cool? uh, honestly, so I would from the logo to the figures themselves, I would get any one of these images tattooed on my body. <laughs> He'll love to hear that. It's fucking brilliant. Look at right. that head chop, man. <laughs> That's a fucking bed, the knife to the throat. Oh. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you... Go ahead. I, I just... I, I, I don't know what it is about... Um, I don't even know what kind I get. I, I don't know what else to call it, but outlaw power comics. E this, this style of work. Well, that's what it is. Yeah. Just, just add, it, it is so much more than if I saw like a, um, a Greg land action sequence or like one of the oh, Brian, yeah. Brian Hicks or something yep. like that. Like I feel like I'm in it more rather than just getting some Hollywood esque splash of action. Like this is, this is the this is the this pretty it, it speaks to me you know i i asked him if he was cool with me running it you know and it, i i don't know if he thinks i you know i was kidding or whether i'm trying to make fun of it but legitimately 100 percent love this stuff you know yeah uh, uber talented now in contrast to this oh that's um that's Mike Ogilvy and that other okay. one who did. Oh, you, you're about ready to say something here. With I was this gonna say, stuff. in contrast to that, open up the um, the one that's called uh, Mid Journey AI. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's uh, here. Right there, yeah. So uh, walk through it. Walk this. Walk through. I haven't done the Mid Journey thing yet, and um, it's kind of trippy. Walk, okay. walk us through what you're. What's going on? <laughs> so about a month ago, or maybe two months ago, the guys that do Living the Line. Um, show are putting out the first ever AI illustrated comic book series that you know they're rushing to press with it you know and it's 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 sort of interesting what they're doing they have they're doing a five issue series um, the first issue is uh, an essay from C.S. Lewis where they just entered um, so in the AI you you go in and you can um, dictate what aspect ratio you want your image so you know and then a prompt where you type in like i would type in like purple robot not no background in a kelly frias style or something and that you know would spit out of uh, four possibilities and then you could just keep going you could make variations of that or start over and just on and on infinite all this shit you know was generated in you know 90 seconds or whatever it's just Ridiculous. Each panel by, you know, 90 seconds each or whatever. But that's insane. So, so I got hooked on just the idea of this, of the prompts and stuff. So that their series is coming out. But so I started talking to him about it. I signed up for um, an account. And um, the idea is, I don't have you seen all the, the talk about this AI art on like in the channel in the kayfabe group? I've, I've seen just different snippets of okay. people posting random so some, images they've done of like Alan Moore right. laugh, laughing while reading poetry and just like right. random shit like that. So so either people are like, well, this will be another tool for an artist to use for inspiration or whatever. And then some people are, this is the fucking end of the world um, because, you know, in a way, all those magazines at the dentist's office or whatever, where you, you, they have articles and they have a piece of art with it. All those illustration gigs are probably gone now because they'll just type in this and get this for free, you know? Um, but I mean, that's, that's capitalism, isn't it? I mean, that yeah. self, the self checkouts and the self driving cars and everybody's going to be out of a fucking job and poor someday. Yeah. But, um, so on the Living the Line channel, there was a two and a half a two and a half hour interview with Dave McKean about uh, AI art, and he went on about you know how there's no heart in it. You know, art is about the journey, not the end result. You know, all this stuff. Great, great interview. Very lengthy. Great interview. Um, so I, you know, it stuck with me for a few days, and I was like, what if Manfred, the robot character, decided he wanted to become a comic book artist? has his friends over to show him the dozens of comics he made overnight. Um, and then they, and then all the, most of the dialogue from that point on is quotes from Dave McKean in this interview. 
So all these. That's brilliant. So so that's brilliant. Uh, so from the one, two, three, four, five, panel six, seven, eight, there, the one with the hand, that'll yep. be a comp. That'll be. I'll have to still uh, superimpose some sort of image there. I had I put out a call for anybody who wanted to make fake logos. We're gonna stick uh, art and fake logos on all these books. And if you go to the next page, all these are like all the comics that Manfred made and there'll be a logo on each one like that one with uh there'll be Crawdad and Thunderbolt and that one to the left that looks like a Shepherd Fairy book will be uh A Cab Adventures and then down below with the guys in the red robes shamanic revolutionaries haha <laughs> <Fuck yeah. laughs> so, that's awesome so that's the idea i didn't know if you'd catch that or not so that's um, awesome i wanted no. to point it i wanted to point it out after hearing you talk to sam uh sam royale but um that's incredible yeah so i'm just gonna do 10 pages of this it's a gimmick everybody don't lose your shit over it because there's like some very um you know intense feelings about you know nobody's i wouldn't like i wouldn't support this art if it's done by an ai it's a 10 page story it's actually about the controversy of ai art and how it has no heart and uh you know i'll be canceling my account after this because <laughs> i don't i don't need to make i don't need to make images i can't tell you how much i know as a new thing like that that bottom left panel i typed in a quote from dave mckean about um the point of life isn't to plan your own funeral i think i put in and then occult graveyard or something and that's what it came up with this very horrific oh, fuck yeah, i know this very horrific image I was that like, is so fucking weird man right that, like all of this like all, all of the the art that i've seen out of this mid journey thing it, it's almost like the abyss staring back it's very dark us. yeah it's very dark horror kind of I mean, look at the at the bottom right. I know. There. I put Jesus with a pyramid on his head, and it's like some straight as zombie junkie like, yeah. looking thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's no. Uh, I mean, it definitely has this like soulless quality. Yeah. To it that I find quite intriguing. <laughs> and I, it, it, I love that you're taking this Dave McKean interview about. It's like you're kind of like ushering in our own. Like we have to recognize, like if the apocalypse is coming, mm -hmm. we got to kind of relish in it. Like I've always told my wife, you know, who thinks the world is basically ending. And I was like, then we have to Thel Thelma and Louise this bitch, man. We got to <laughs> just fucking put our sunglasses on and just fucking drive off the cliff if that's what's going on. And yeah. that's what that's what this kind of feels like. So that that page uh, that page you're looking at now is something I just made up yesterday. So I'm that's still incredible. working on that. It's not lettered or logoed or anything yet, but. I'm fucking definitely trying to get it done by September 1st. So that's when the Kickstarter goes off. You, uh, have you found anybody to do the Shamanic Revolutionaries logo yet? Are you getting yeah, Sam, Sam to do it? No, no. It's all, I've already got them all. Like, cool. I just put out a public call and people went crazy. Like, that's awesome. The community has been so, like, like for that, like when I asked for the logos, you know, I had like 15 or 20 people. You know, I had to turn people away. That's I also put out a call. We're doing um, last last time we put out uh, during the campaign. I released uh, mixtapes mm -hmm. of um, you know, it's kind of spiritual, satanic, enlightenment themed uh, yep. either songs or instrumentals with spoken word stuff over it. Yeah, and it, I I put out another call. It looks like I got about a half a dozen people working on stuff. We'll see if it happens. This is Oleg Green, the guy I wanted to do the third book with. It lives in Russia. He's crazy. This story is um, so. There's five clones of Christ. That's all the kids. They're the, they're the clones of Christ. Um, and <laughs> this image is like, gonna get me banned from YouTube. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's supposed to be um, supposed to be like a Newsboy Legion story. You know the news the Kirby's Newsboy Legion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like the five the. The, the five kids on an adventure you know they um the idea is satan wants to be reborn through time travel through hitler's body and there's got to stop it that's funny right when i flicked to that man uh, looking out my window there was a squirrel that tried to run and jump onto a tree limb and freaking fell oh no 
<laughs> Look what your art is doing to the world, Matt King. Man. It's ending. Whew. Rock and roll. That's all this is. That's Mike Ogilvy, who was supposed to be in the backup of the first book. He just finished these pages. He's been working on them for like four years off and on. He's really grown as an artist. He's redrawn, he's redrawn the first couple pages. I don't know. A mm. multitude of times. Uh, he couldn't figure out what kind of ink to use that when he watercolored over it, it didn't make the ink run. Mm. So he did the inks on one layer and then put it on his light box and then watercolored on a separate, gave me scans of both and we're uh, compositing them together to mm. make this. He's a good kid. Scotland, from Scotland. Nice. Very worldwide. Everybody, you know, we got, um, do you know Johan Peterson? Yeah. That's the Bill Nash book. Yep. We got him. Yeah, he's from Denmark. Um, we have Ragne from Norway. The last story of the book is Christopher Koltzow. Does a, ooh, that's the kid from Mexico. Uh, Adon Vasquez. It's like a Bruce Tim kind of, sort of look to it. I love it. This is um, Jesus running into the satanic temple in the real world and seeing what they're all about. <laughs> Beautiful work. Nice cock shot there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, that, what a great cartoonist. He's, he's wonderful. Holy shit. Very, man, you got to admire someone that can Again, draw this a is legit a kid. vehicle. <laughs> This is a kid I met. He was doing stuff on Tumblr, just illustrations and stuff. It's just so gorgeous. And I hit him up. This is even before I hit him up, before we even, I was doing these books and wanted to get a commission. And he was like, I don't, you know, I don't do that. I have to work. I don't have time. I was like, didn't make any sense to me, you know? I was like, I'm trying to pay you to draw something, but whatever. Mm -hmm. um, ended up on Instagram. I found him again. Um, he did, he did a, a, a short story, I think, for another company that hasn't come out yet. But again, this is his first comics work. First or second, you know? He doesn't have anything published yet. That's, well, he will now. For sure. How, so how many, how many artists do you think that you're debuting, like, they're really their, their first, like, full comics? Because it seems like we've encountered that a few times. I mean, they're all short stories, but I mean, I've got to say probably, I don't know, 10 or 12, maybe. I don't even know, you know. <laughs> you ever thought about becoming like one of the like top independent comics publishers, like forming a company? Because damn, dude. Eh, damn. It's, it's, you definitely sounds, have a knack of pulling people together. So um, sounds like a lot of money to do that. And I don't know. You know what I mean? I to, set, to set i wouldn't even know where to start but to, it just sounds like a i mean i love comics I, if i could make money a living out of doing comics but then it's like you're on the when you're doing it for money then you're like yeah well you know negotiating page rates uh, you know just so you can get by it just doesn't it seems like a job then yeah you know? yeah uh, tony and i were talking about that in his interview a little bit of just how can we how can we do this to where we can all make a living that it can be a viable industry but we don't lose our soul doing it at the same time right and it's just that's the never-ending question it seems um because I, I mean i've i was having a conversation with another another buddy of mine who i collaborate with and he writes and i draw some things and um i you know i was telling him i've just resolved myself to the fact that i don't I, I've got a day job and I'm okay with my day job because I don't, I know some of the people that are, you know, having to struggle being independent freelance artists in, in the, in the industry right now. And it just doesn't seem fun at all. And they're having to, they're faced with having to do stuff that they just like, I'm, I'm, they have to do whatever to just keep, right. you know, paying the bills. And I just, being a person who has to support a family, I have to. I have to have a reliable income and a secure right. future. So well, I, you, I've resigned well, myself to the fact that it's going to be a hobby in a, in a way, but it's, it's what I spend all my spare time doing. It's like, well, it's when more you, than when a you, hobby. 
when you talk to Buster Moody, he was saying, you know, he's got a regular, you know, video job. In addition, I don't know how many he gets so much work done after that, but with a family and everything. But um, he did a pin up. He did a pin up for this book coming up, and um, he's he's maybe doing one of the mixtapes. We'll see. But you know, oh, he they should. Just, they just they just did uh, they just had a, another baby, so it seems like he's probably got his plate full. Yeah, which is you know unfortunate for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good for him, bad for you. <laughs> yeah, Buster rocks. Well, yeah, he's great. I, I do totally feel like I missed the bandwagon on this. Um, Dude, send I, something it, for the book too. Let's go. <laughs> all right. Get it over here. I I, I, would, I would love that because um, Kickstarter's Kickstarter's four days away. So okay, you like another, hey, you got you got like a month to get it to me. You know. <laughs> cool. We'll talk. We'll talk. Um, all right. Well, uh, shoot. So Kickstarter drops September first. Um, fifty bucks for the book, but that's 50. like a dollar a page. So, right? No, mm, I'm doing my no. math wrong. I'm doing my it's math like, totally it's like wrong. Ten, ten cents a page. Ten cents a page. <laughs> I need more coffee, apparently. It'd be um, a five hundred forty-eight dollar book would be great for yeah, me. Yeah, for you, it'd be awesome. <laughs> um, Jesus, um, I'm definitely drop. I've already been supporting enough Kickstarters, but I can't miss out on this book. This is everything. Uh, and again, for anybody watching, we've only touched like maybe ten percent of the no, work we- in the book. Now nah, we must have looked at, I mean, well, I mean, not every page, but we've looked at half the artists anyways, you know, but we haven't touched on any of the pinups or, you know, yeah. there's a lot, there's, I really, I mean, I feel as a consumer, when I look at Kickstarter and I see people that charge $20 for a regular comic, I, all the time I'm like, fuck this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I do support most of them, but, <laughs> but you know, I'm asking, I think it's $52 for this book, but it's, it's got so much in it. You know, I mean, yeah. I, un- I understand it's a big ask, especially in this economy, et cetera, you know, $52, another $10 of shipping, you know, what if you wanted a t-shirt, you know, the shit's expensive, no yeah. doubt, but I feel like I'm giving value, you know? Yeah. Well, you are, because again, like the first, I imagine this is, well, obviously it's going to be a lot like the first one, which gets revisited. It's one of those books I revisit often and I find something new every time. And there's not many books out there that are like that, um, that you you might read again because you enjoy it, but to keep going back to it over and over again and keep finding more shit. And I mean, that's, I mean, you're definitely getting your bang for your buck. Well, I really tried to, you know, pepper it with, I mean, more than pepper it, like fill it with Easter eggs of, you know, if you knew that if you've read this story or if you're familiar with this, you know, the the riff on the Batman 1940s panel where he slaps the girl or, you know, it's just like it's like this panel's from this, this panel's from that. You know, there's a lot that, you know, I'm sure everybody's not getting, but, you know, a certain portion get a certain amount of it you know well, the fact that you even like threw that easter egg in of the red rub shamanic revolutionaries man that was like <laughs> that that's that's weird watching that kind of manifest out in reality for me that's well that's when you guys shit. were talking i was like "Ooh, Shaman- that's a great that's a great title so i just wrote it down quickly on a notepad next to me and then i can't you know when i started building you know a dozen fake books i was like ah, we can do something with that <laughs> Cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, I'll uh, uh, give me your address after this. I'll send you a book that I wrote that like where all of that came from, where all of that spawned from, and I have a little bit of artwork in there. Oh, your you. new book? I'll, I'll send it. No, 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 no. It's an old. It's the okay. first not first novel I ever wrote. Okay. That spawned this idea. It all came from a dream, and uh, it's kind of weird. It's very. It's it's almost like the way William S. Burroughs wrote. Because I, I picked. I picked up your new book. Oh, God. I'm sorry. (laughs) Don't be sorry. (laughs) You poor guy. It's Uh, heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. It's. (sighs) Yeah. It almost feels like it was so, you know, the going through traditional publishing. It's so weird because it's it's almost that was almost two years ago or more for me. And so mm-hmm. much has so much has changed for me too, and um, and even when I first originally even wrote the manuscripts, 
like I was, it just feels so long ago and I feel like a completely different. So by the time it came out, this is why I suck. By, by the time it came out to promote, like, I don't want to fucking talk about it. I right. don't want to like, you know, the, the publisher tried to help me get some interviews and I got a couple, you know, but it was just, um, now the name of the publisher is what? Llew- Llewellyn. Llewellyn. Yeah. So when I did my research for like all these, uh, for these comics and stuff, I was buying off eBay, like old 1970s probe the unknown or 60s, 70s fate magazines and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they're all that publisher is all over those ads. Like yep. they're like, you know, of you, I mean, obviously, you know, but they're very, um, core centric to that whole alternate sort of, well, back in the day, there were way more like, um, like, uh, in like in the seventies and in eighty, they were very um, uh, much in that like the occult scene. Yes, and, yes. Uh, like like heavy drivers for that shit. And like if you pick up old like Golden Dawn books, Israel Regardi books, like those S. L. Yep. Now they're a little bit more. They're I'm probably gonna get kicked out now, but now they're That's a little bit more. Dope. Edit, edit. New agey, <laughs> woo woo ish. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot. There, there's actually a lot of content that just doesn't like it doesn't i don't i don't actually fit in well which is weird you know that they've accepted my work i don't i don't feel like i fit in with that mm. dynamic um that they're they kind of cater to nowadays um but i don't know they probably you know whatever and they used to they used to put out that magazine Gnostica, I believe. Yep. You know, so yep. I have a I bought a run of those or not. I don't know if a run, but I have several. I must have a dozen of them. You know, I, I do too. I got a whole stack downstairs. That's I just, love that shit. I love it so much. That's where all that fake advertising stuff. That's the vibe I was going for. All that <clears> shit is just like. I mean, not just in the, the the story pages do I try to distill everything that I like, but like in those ad pages, it's like this is yeah. great, this is great. I'm on my brother, like no more, more like the original. Yeah, you know, he and he's really duplicated a lot of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, anyway, you can get hours of entertainment out of those old magazines without even reading the articles. Even. Right, it's crazy. Right. It's um, it's weird. It's weird that we don't seem to have a form of. Inter- like media entertainment like that anymore right um, i don't have something you know i don't see anything out there right now other than tales of the hey. that, give, that gives you that hours of enjoyment but all right well hey i'm gonna kind of wrap this up absolutely i had a great time Same. um I, I i hopefully we could talk a little bit after this um yeah, a little sure. bit more and stick around but everybody out there support that kickstarter this is like really some of the best shit out there in the independent industry. So go get it. Wow. Um, thank you. Really appreciate your time, man. Um, and I'll talk to you hopefully soon. Another time. And everybody keep it psycho. Right on. Right on.